Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being on board for my le next little adventure that's ahead of us. As the little teaser already gave it away, we have a next stop in India. We went global and we really want to give you a global experience and insights into SAP TechEd in 2020 from a different angle, namely from uh, local communities from all around the world, how they are experiencing SAP TechEd in 2020. It's my pleasure to have one of our lovely friends and SAP champion, Nabit Madan, joining me in just a sec here on my rooftop. He is giving us insights into the Indian community and um, insights into um, how they like SAP Tagit so far. So as, um, Nabit actually joined the SAP community back in 2009 and he started his um, career with ABAP. Early on, he gave um, insights into the transition from an ABAP programmer to a developer. And in his session with Max, he um, actually already shared his philosophy, which is learn, share, and repeat. And I'm excited to find out more about it. Welcome, Navid Madan. Hi, Lina. How are you? I'm very, very good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty great. It's like uh, uh, the last, I think, 12, 13, 14 hours, how many, I don't know, but they have been awesome. They are like information overdose. <laughs> That's great to hear. I, um, I saw that you already took a walk this morning, the hashtag UTFRW. <laughs> Yeah, I took a walk by, and attended three sessions while walking also. So it was audio one and I loved it. It's like, it's a, what more can do you expect from a morning like this? Some learnings and a fitness. Yeah. That's what I call multitasking, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, kind of, <laughs> true. We just saw this guy of Bangalore, um, but you're actually from the very north of India, right? Yes, I'm, I belong to Missy Lamb based out of Panchkula, Chandigarh, it's in northern India, foothill of the Himalayas or Shivaliks. Yes. Lovely. Uh, I've been to India before. I found it very, very impressive, um, especially how many languages you guys speak. Um, how do you communicate with uh, the local community over there? So as you are already aware, because India is huge, so we have, every state has its own languages, right? So normally uh, in a northern side or central side, we have Hindi and then along with the regional state wise languages and along the southern side, we have its own languages. East, every state has its own languages. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the common language when it comes to all India, we talk in normally in English. But when it's about, uh, you know, let's say a meetup around Chandigarh or something, then we, we go around with Hindi and mix of Punjabi also. So it's more of a regional. For example, people in South talk about Kannad or Tamil along with English. So it's, it's a healthy mix and, and everyone enjoys this diversified thing. Perfect, that's good to hear. Have you heard anything from yeah. uh, your peers and friends already? Uh, favorite sessions that they watched? Um, anything that they've learned so far? I think the, the, the few of my uh, community members are pretty excited about uh, the, the RESTful application programming model along with CAP. And uh, they were also pretty excited about what all magic uh, the SAP developer team did in the developer keynotes. So which actually opened the eyes of everyone that, okay, there, there, is, there are too many things which we can do. So, so they are looking forward to learn CAP, which is Cloud Application Programming Model, of course, enhance their exposure to SAP UI5, chatbots and RPA. So, so these are the three, three, four topics, which is, which I can hear and I can get the feedback from our friends and community members. Lovely. Is that also your favorite topic or what was your favorite topic so far? Develop a keynote or any highlights? <laughs> I think I think there were two, three. One was uh, the executive keynote starting with a social course that was like, wow for me, it was very good. You know, we as a community supported. And uh, then the same thing about um, the, the, that we care about our developer community. Those are the two things. And of course, then thirdly, wow moment was the developer keynote. The end when it was like, wow man, <laughs> it's magic happening on stage, yeah. Lovely. Um, you share your YouTube channel, which is the technology enthusiast, um, also on your SAP community profile. How did you come up with um, that YouTube channel where you share your knowledge and expertise uh, with community members and the broader audience as well? 
Uh, inspiration, if you ask me for that channel is uh, DJ Adams, his hands on SAP Dev started it. So, so I took inspiration from that channel and then uh, slowly started building on, on what I feel is uh, needed by the community and where everyone can benefit. And plus, you know, once you start getting a good and constructive feedback, so this encourages you to move forward and you know do more for the community and in fact it's not about doing more for the community you actually do more for yourself also because you learn so many things so i think yeah, dj adams somewhere inspired me in a very deep way and i started with it you actually says that uh, say that education should always be free and one should always be a learner can you yes. share a little bit more uh, on your opinion with that i really appreciate it because i think in the same uh, direction yeah, so education should always be free is why? Because uh, when I started my career, I think at times getting the server also was a tough time, right? But in times like now where our SAP has taken an approach where you can have free trials, right? It is practically everything is free. So that enables the ecosystem that brings so many different views to the ecosystem that actually makes our developer ecosystem vast and it makes us grow. And it, it basically it evolves, right? Mm -hmm. And I think money should not be the one thing which should hinder this growth. That's why I always live by education should always remain free. There are a number of different ways to earn money, but not with education. And uh, learn, share, repeat is coming from one of my friend's father philosophy that you are what because of your community. And it is a very high time when you start giving back to the community. So it's like learn, yeah. you share with the community and then you keep it's an infinite loop. Keep, and keep continue. Yes, that's it. Yeah, continue. Please continue sharing your knowledge with the SAP community. And um, I, it was lovely talking to you. Thanks for taking your time. Have a good one, Thanks. Nabit. <laughs> Thanks yeah, a lot. Take good. care. Bye. bye bye. So now we got a brief overview of what is happening in uh, India and how they are liking SAP Tech so far, especially from Nabit giving us more um, insights into his philosophy and uh, his opinion of learn, share and repeat. Um, coming up next, um, I want to give back to Beth and Craig who are waiting for you guys down the stairs in the living room after a little break. Hi, welcome back downstairs in the living room and big thank you to Lena there for the update on the rooftop. Uh, good to see what's going on in India, right? Yeah, um, 
to be honest with you, for me, normally I would be there right now. I mean, nor in a normal environment, we were finishing off the tech ed season yeah. with our final one in Bangalore. So yeah, it's, uh, it's an unusual one. Uh, I've gone to Bangalore like every year since like 2005. So, but I was there this year. I was there at the beginning of this year um, for our internal event, the DCOM. Oh, okay. So it was great being able to see the colleagues then. Now, I, you know, it's virtual like everything else. Yeah. But um, it's great to hear from the folks over there. Yeah, all the better that we have these check-ins, right? We get Absolutely. That, that feeling that we're all together, even if we're not quite in the same circumstances that we would like to be. Okay, so the focus in the next hour is the topic of integration. And you can find, obviously, a lot more on the uh, content track, Integrated Intelligent Suite. So if you're a UI designer, um, an admin, a security expert, it, these are the places to go. Or this is the track to go if you want to find out more about the tools and processes in this area. And uh, as with all important things, it's important to double down. Um, and we are doubling down, haha, ha, boom, boom, with two speakers, not just one, two. We have Michael Ameling, who's the head of Intelligent Enterprise Program and Cross Product Architecture at SAP, and Philip Herzig, who's the head of Product Engineering, Intelligent Enterprise and Cross Architecture at SAP. So we have the product and the technology side yep. there coming together. They're going to talk about SAP suite qualities. We saw a little bit about that yesterday in the keynote. In fact, we saw a lot about the topic of integration yesterday in the keynote. Um, they're going to talk. It's an important topic. It is a very important yeah, topic. It's very important topic. In yeah. fact, it was mentioned in the panel as well many mm -hmm. times as well. Absolutely. Um, they're going to give us some concrete examples. They have a fantastic demo in the strategy talk. And they'll explain a little bit about the additional offerings and methodologies that are out there to help you get started as well. So we'll have a live interview with both Michael and Philip right after the strategy talk. So put your questions into the chat. Make sure you're watching from on, on inside the platform to get the full Q&A experience. And we'll take some of your questions into the live interview afterwards. So let's go now to hear from the strategy talk from uh, Michael Ameling and Philip Herzig. Welcome to our strategy talk, Taking Integration to the Next Level. My name is Michael Ameling and with me is Philipp Herzig. We will jointly give you an update on SAP's integration strategy. In the beginning, we will give a short recap on our integration strategy and then deep dive into our in integrated suite. We will outline the suite qualities which give the value to our customers and show you a demo example about an end-to-end -end business process. Afterwards, we will relate it to our business technology platform and then give you also some additional guidance with our enterprise architects. Let's start with our integration strategy. You may know that SAP has acquired certain companies. For example, success factors for the human capital management or Concours for travel management. Unfortunately, these acquisitions come with some challenges. You may know that there is a certain different user experience along these different applications, that integration might be sometimes complex and that they are built on different stacks. Now what we said is we need to deliver an integrated and intelligent suite, meaning end-to-end -end business processes. In order to do so, we said we need to focus on four different customer requirements. The first thing is, if we want to deliver such end-to-end -end business processes, we need to focus on extensibility and building an ecosystem for our partners. Concrete, it means if we have these end-to-end -end business processes, that we can also extend them to the customer's needs. Secondly, it's about data to value. We want to give analytical insights, have a search or even reuse and reuse artificial intelligence and other technologies like robotic process automation and machine learning. Thirdly, it's about integration. It's about SAP to SAP integration, so basically putting the products together and deliver a seamless user experience. But it's also about openness. We know that there are hybrid scenarios. We know that there are legacy systems. So we need to have a platform uh, where partners and customers can integrate with. And last, not to forget, it's also about development, agility and speed. So not a platform which only drives TCO. It's also that cloud native developers, citizen developers can build on our platform. This applies for SAP internally 
as well as for partners and customers. Now let's dive into the integration part. Customers came to us and said, what we need from SAP is an aligned domain model, APIs that are harmonized, consistent. We need to access events to extend our scenarios. Secondly, they ask for a seamless user experience. It's a look and feel. So basically, how does buttons, colors, font size, but also navigation patterns underneath. Thirdly, it's an out of the box integration. I talked about end-to-end -end business processes, so it's not that we have different siloed applications. We need to deliver them out of the box with integrated and or even with content on top. Third point is the open integration. I mentioned already that we need to be able to integrate legacy systems, third-party systems and partner systems, and not to forget security. Security is key here. And to give a very simple examples, customers expect that they can use one user, identify, use single sign-on, and even have the right authorization out of the box so that they can execute along the value chain and along these end-to-end -end business processes. Now, how does it look like concrete? Last year, we introduced four end-to-end -end business processes. This is lead to cash, designed to operate, source to pay, and recruit to retire. We said that we will deliver an intelligent enterprise along these four major scenarios. In order to do so, we said that we will deliver an intelligent suite which comes with certain requirements. So exactly the points, the customer requirements, which I mentioned in beforehand, we will deliver with so-called suite qualities. It's about user experience where we apply and along these scenarios exactly implement the your design guidelines. It's that we integrate an identity service along all applications which are used in these scenarios to deliver a uh, unified identity management. We are aligning all master data objects, transactional data and configuration data with one domain model and take sure that this is integrated for data replication, but also that it's used for APIs which we deliver for integration. We take care of analytics, we deliver in one inbox, and of course, since we are in a cloud environment, that we can do a coordinated lifecycle management. Now you may ask, how does this look like? This is why we also implemented so-called reference architecture or process blueprints. So if you go on api.sap.com, you will find these scenarios and can look exactly what you need to become an intelligent enterprise. For further information, we rolled out an integration strategy paper in the beginning of this year. It gives you an overview of the intelligent suite. It shows how we use the suite qualities to deliver an intelligent suite and how it's built on our business technology platform and even integrates with SAP Cloud Platform Integration Suite. Now we know it's not only the products and the deliveries what you are keen on, it's also about the roadmap so to ensure investments. So within this paper, you will see also some deadlines along these suite qualities. And over the summer, we wrote out an additional paper to see how we made progress. Now, it's not that we are finished with that. So one key takeaway also here is we will continue this activity. There will be further suite qualities. We know that we are not finished with user experience. So it's definitely more to come and we will evolve this over time. But let's give a concrete example. And here, let me hand over to Philip. Thanks a lot, Michael. And as you just said, let's take one specific example from those four processes, specifically recruit to retire, to see how it helps HR professionals to actually get their job done across our solutions. But before we take a look at this demo, let's recap what is really important for an HR leader, for an HR professional, in particular in those unprecedented times we are facing today when it comes to workforce management, of course, our internal employees, as well as external ones. HR leaders want to get visibility into their total workforce and, of course, the financial impact on the business. They want to have seamless HR processes for business continuity and remote work, given our very special situation that we are all together in, in those, in those very special times. And at the same time, it's all about the, still the employee experience and the engagement to drive engagement and productivity. 
At the end of the day, what HR leaders want to do is to put people at the center of the enterprise. And what we really need is an integrated intelligent enterprise process that supports the end-to-end -end HR process out of the box. So what we did, when you look at an overall enterprise, we structured, as Michael already outlined, those into those four processes, lead to cash, coming from the front office, designed to operate, which is a manufacturing supply chain. And then, of course, there are the supporting processes, like recruit to retire, to take care of the workforce. And what we actually did, you may remember that in the past, the same process may have been called total workforce management. Today, recruit to retire subsumes three main processes. It's hire to retire, which manages the life cycle of an internal worker end to end. It is also including travel to reimburse. So whenever workers are traveling or doing expense management, it's also subsumed under Recruit to Retire today. And finally, external workforce management. So whenever you are engaging with third parties, with other suppliers, with temporary contingent workers to expand your workforce in, the, in case you need it the most. And actually, the business applications supporting those processes are SAP success factors SAP S4 in the cloud, SAP Concur, Field Glass, and Ariba. So let's dive deeper into a process that we call external workforce management. So where we can really end-to-end -end across SAP success factors, Field Glass and S4 HANA, cloud and on-prem, can actually manage the entire life cycle of an employee. And what we do today from a data integration perspective is three main things. One, you need to get the cost centers or the projects like the work breakdown structures from S4 HANA Cloud into success factors or into field glass. So for example, in field glass that you can book your, your billable hours on a certain cost uh, accounting structure. Of course, there's also an exchange of HR organizational units or job classifications that need to be exchanged where SAP success factors is actually the leading system and it needs to go into field glass. And then finally, of course, the workers themselves, yeah? the master data where, again, success factors is in there, which also needs to replicate this into S4HANA to reconcile against the downstream processes. What is important today, those are all aligned of what Michael has called the one domain model. This is the recent innovation and we say there is actually no mapping necessary. Those pieces work out of the box because we now, for those entities, actually have a aligned data model that all those solutions participating in the process understand out of the box. So this, 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 there's a seamless integration with respect to syntax and semantics. There are still also some where we are working on this one domain model. For example, the purchasing organization or the planned from S4HANA Cloud is, uh, remains to be um, replicated, for example, over Cloud Platform Integration Suite. But we plan to actually also enable those in the future via the one domain model approach. And besides, of course, the main organizational or uh, um, business-related entities of, in, in, in our domain, we, of course, also have the more technical things. For example, when a worker is created, he or she should be, of course, automatically also be able to log in into all those solutions, being authenticable against those solutions out of the box as well. And when you log in, for example, as a manager or as an employee, all the authorizations, all the business roles should apply equally across those solutions. We also accomplished this. So let me show you really a complex scenario that we actually, and this is no demo where, that we have just released with S4HANA Cloud and SuccessFactors in 2011, just a month ago, in a real life scenario. For this demo, let's assume I'm Jeff. I'm actually in a big manufacturing plant, a production director. And I have an urgent demand in my production plan for further people because demand is just increasingly high on my products. And I intend to hire a production oversight manager to help me overseeing my entire production. And I believe, because demand is just temporary, to hire actually an external worker. Now, from directly from within success factors, I can ex now jump directly into SAP field class to create an external job posting where actually all the data from the success factors system has been taken over already. Furthermore, inside field class, of course, I want to enrich um, 
the, the, this, this job posting with specific data, what I estimate, for example, how many hours this worker should work, what the average rate might be, to come up with a total span for internal approval. So I continue here and conclude this, this job posting that can be actually sent to all my suppliers. So I submit this into the system. And now let's actually travel a little bit in time. A couple of suppliers actually applied for this position and submitted their job seekers to this job posting. In fact, two people actually have been sent here, which is Charles and Leo. So let's compare them inside Feedblast side by side and compare them. And what we can see is that Leo actually has a two-star rating for 43,000 euros approximately and 27,000 euros that Charles, but with a five-star rating actually. So of course I would typically conduct an interview, but this sounds good and I go ahead with the hiring. Now, once we have selected the right candidate, we also need to negotiate with the supplier what is actually the statement of work and what we expect out of this engagement. So therefore, I create a work order with that supplier that includes all the legal uh, details to actually uh, get the work started. So I submit this, and once the work order is actually completed, again, traveling in time and having all of the, the approvals in place, we also create with the right amount, the corresponding purchase order now inside the S4HANA system, all out of the box. So here you can see actually the standard PO with a net order value of 20, uh, 27,000 uh, euro directly in the system. And you can also see for whom this actually applies. Now, once this is in there and everything has been finalized, I need to activate actually this work order. Act upon activation, and I can make here a final check if everything is correct from my perspective, I can activate this, which actually will send now automatically an email towards Charles so that he is able to log into the system later on to record his hours. What also happens is that Charles' employee master record is actually also populated towards S4HANA Cloud as well as SAP success factors so that you can manage also Charles from those systems as well or reconcile data against Charles. Now let's assume Charles has just completed his first working week and wants to record his time. So he logs into field glass and records hours for actually the various days of that first working week and submits this to the system. Of course, Jeff, as the production director, needs now to approve this timesheet. And if he does, automatically a service entry sheet is created in S4HANA with 656 euros because this corresponds actually to the worked hours and is actually reconciled against the original purchase order of 27k in this case. Now of course there's one day where you need to of course for Charles need to create an invoice so because you need to pay him right and of course a supplier to receive the, uh, the money for this so now there is again in field class the possibility to actually create this invoice which is basically the pdf representation of that invoice i can do a final check see the stated amount taxes of course and adjustments that may apply and i approve this and upon this approval again out of field class fully integrated the corresponding supplier invoice is actually also created inside the S4HANA system. So here with a gross amount now of 780, and if I click on this, it actually shows me this exactly corresponds again to the amount for this purchasing document that is also included here, and of course the tax rate that applies. Finally, what is very important, thanks to the integration, as I said, the employee master is also replicated to success factors. So going forward until actually Charles may leave again, or maybe the engagement is over, Jeff can continue managing Charles' master data directly from within success factors going forward. So this actually concludes a quite frankly speaking, very complex scenarios that we of course cut it down due to the various complexities and that we simplified here and there. Otherwise, the process would run longer than this session. But 
you can just see from this experience how seamless actually all the data is meanwhile integrated thanks to the one domain model thanks to the security you also have seen improvements converging the user experience adopting uh, fiori design guidelines more and more so to really make it possible that such a seamless pro process despite three main solutions and products being involved which are in itself already complex to really map it to an end-to-end -end business process to make it really an exceptional workforce experience for in this case the external workers but also all the associated parties that are part and participate under this process and we have been taking now in 2020 a big step forward with those integrations but very clearly we're not stopping here as Michael already outlined this is just the beginning and we are as SAP committed to further improve over the next years very similar scenarios across the intelligent enterprise in 2021 and with this I'd like to hand over Michael to talk a bit about the underpinnings with the business technology platform thank you Philip with this, let me come to the business technology platform, which is the foundation, and let's relate it how it comes to the intelligent suite in the intelligent enterprise. As we outlined in the beginning, to deliver the intelligent enterprise, the intelligent suite, and also industry cloud, we need one common foundation, which is the business technology platform. Philip mentioned about the integration of master data distribution. He mentioned about identity services. So these are capabilities which must come out of the box of an according platform. With the business technology platform, we on the one hand focus on four major pillars. So it's about the database and data management. So we know that HANA, HANA Cloud are here, of course, the, the key pillars for the data management. We have the analytics part where we have SAP Analytics Cloud, which we recently embedded, for example, in SuccessFactors or S4 HANA. We have the application and development integration. This is exactly where we have these according services to deliver an integration replication of master data or such an identity service. And not to forget about the intelligent technologies which we use to bring the best value along these end-to-end -end business processes. So even more detailed, it means that we leverage from certain capabilities of the platform to ensure a tight integration into our applications. Now, since we know it's not a cloud-only environment which you are tackling, uh, and we heard a lot of feedback that how do you answer this now to our hybrid landscape? How do you engage with the on-premise landscapes? Now, with that, we actually want to outline also on a SAP Cloud Platform integration suite. This is our answer, how you can integrate SAP systems, legacy systems, non-SAP systems, third-party systems, and the like. What does it mean in detail? You see on the left side, all the applications which we want to connect to. Now in order to do this, we need APIs and events. If you go again on api.sap.com, you will find a unified documentation of all available APIs. We just recently even published APIs from S4 HANA on premise, so that you have one entry point to access those. You might also have heard of SAP Graph. This is a harmonized access layer to the so one domain model, so to basically one language of APIs that you can access your sales order, your workforce person and the like. On top, you will see that there's enterprise messaging for eventing. We have serverless runtimes and the open connectors, which gives you the ability to connect already to such systems. Now, this is the technology side of the house. A lot of customers also approached us. Now, how do I do this? There's A to A integration, B to B integration and the like. So we said we need to give even further guidance, not only technology, it's also something where we need to have a methodology behind. With that, let me come to some integration guidance. What we developed is an SAP integration solution advisory methodology. It's basically a framework that you can use to assess your integration strategy, to look what you need in your on-premise, your hybrid or your cloud environment how to integrate, how to structure this, and then decide best which technology you need. May it be from the integration suite, subdata intelligence, and other solutions. In addition, in the beginning, we introduced the integration strategy paper. So that's the first reading you might go into to see what we are delivering along the intelligent enterprise. 
Now what we are going to release even on top is an updated CIO guide. It gives you a high level summary how to do integration, architecture and so on. And even further down, we got a lot of feedback how to do this in detail, which technology to choose. Therefore, we are also publishing an integration architecture guide. It's mainly for enterprise architects to get a deep dive on integration patterns, on technology, with a strong focus on SAP integration suite and SAP data uh, intelligence. With this, you have a lot of material which you can dive into and also which helps you to decide on the best integration and even extend your end-to-end -end scenarios. With this, we are already finished. And let me outline shortly a few sessions which might be also in your interest. So we have an architecture vision on the business technology platform. We have a session on the business processes. We have also further detailed sessions on one domain model uh, to show how this works from the technical side as well as from the uh, integration um, along the end-to-end -end business processes. We can show you more details on the suite qualities and not to forget on roadmap how does this look on the timeline. With that, a big thanks from Philip on my side and see you soon. All right, and we will see them very soon. We're going to go into a live interview with Michael and Philip in just a moment. But before we do, um, I just want to remind you that you can also check out a lot more content around the topic of integration on the Integrated Intelligence Suite content track. Um, Michael just mentioned there a couple of the, of the sessions that are coming up over the next couple of days. Uh, I picked out a couple that I, I sort of thought were particularly interesting. There's a lot around SAP Fiori um, on the track. There's also an interesting customer perspective. Um, Michael mentioned the Integration Solution Advisory methodology and there's a session there about Chevron and how they're applying that. And then there's also a, a session on integrated architecture for the intelligent digital supply chain. So definitely check out the content track and you can find all the details there. Um, so we can go over now. I'm reliably informed that they're going to join us in just a second. So we can go over now to the live interview. And don't forget, you can keep sending us your feedback and your comments. Hashtag TechEd, hashtag SAP community, oh, sorry, hashtag SAP TechEd. I missed out. Yeah, I, was, I was about to say, come you on. should have jumped in there, Craig. <laughs> All hashtag right. Pets Hi, of guys. TechEd. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here in the SAP TechEd house. Great to have you with us. And thank you as well for the strategy talk. Very, very interesting. So to kick things off, uh, Craig and I were just discussing and we were saying it was actually a, a maybe a good idea to put things into context and talk about how the two of you like work together because one's on the technology side and one's on the product side and the kind of the yin and the yang of integration. So maybe you just want to, as an icebreaker to kick things off, just tell us a little bit about how the two of you work together. Maybe starting with you, Philip. Thanks, uh, Beth, also for having us here. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward now uh, to the question. So should we actually take now the first question already just from the... Maybe you can tell us uh, a little bit about how the two, just to set it into context for the, for the people watching who aren't familiar with the setup, how the two of you work together. Because I know that you are obviously on the product side and Michael is on the technology side and it would just be quite interesting to understand the context around that. Yeah, sure. No, that's easy to, to answer, right? So on the one hand side, we have the, the business technology platform and Michael oversees the integration and, and, and the, the services that are being built as part of the business technology platform, the cloud platform, uh, the, the HANA, of course, uh, SAP Analytics Cloud and the likes, including all the services and so on, and really ensuring uh, that, uh, that this is a harmonized portfolio that we are offering. And at the same time, of course, we on the application side, looking at s for hana success factors, Concur, Ariba, Field Glass, and so on. We, of course, also ensure uh, that, that, that this is actually aligned more and more according to the business processes. You just have seen this external workforce management demo actually uh, here in, in, in this talk. And um, what we are doing there is we come from the business process, we align this across the applications, and then we look with Michael together on what are actually the necessary technologies we need to integrate this better, to build this in an out-of-the-box fashion, yeah, with, always with the attempt to make this, uh, the, uh, bring our applications closer together, but at the same time, while well, well, bringing the applications together on the business technology platform, improving the business technology platform so that whenever you build custom cases, uh, individual customer scenarios on the 
BTP that we can leverage actually everything that we are also building internally uh, for all our customers and partners out there. Perfect. Thank you for putting it into context there. <laughs> so we do have, as you mentioned, you do, we do have lots of questions already on, on the platform. And we have a couple of questions as well here between Craig and myself. So I'm going to start with the one on the platform that I can see in front of me. Um, it says, you mentioned that you build up the one domain model. Is there a schedule by when the objects and entities and processes will be available? And I'll go to you, Michael, for that one. Yeah, thank you. Um... Yes, indeed. So we, as we outlined in the talk, um, so we are targeting the one domain model. And actually, the good news, so we just released the one domain model in the API Business Hub with the first entities. Um, and there, of, of course, uh, the plan is to integrate the one domain model step by step into the end-to-end -end business scenarios. So you have seen a first plan in the, our integration strategy paper. Maybe we can also put the link into, into the chat. And uh, as we see the first plan, how we, for example, integrate the cost center, workforce, person, and the like. But most important is that we use this model for our end-to-end -end business processes to gain more value, right? So to come, for example, to an event-driven integration uh, where you ensure that these uh, models are synchronized and replicated across the entire applications. So this means, so we don't have a roadmap, let's say, for each individual object, but what we do is, with the scenarios like hire to retire, external workforce management and the like, we ensure that the integration all happens based on this one domain model. And the technologies we use for that are, for example, the master data integration service, as, as we outlined. So this is a service for replicating based on the one domain model between, for example, success vectors and s 4 Perfect, thank you. Uh, the next question, I think, in, as I can see in, in the, the list as they go along, as also for you, Michael, it says a lot of customers use Azure as their main cloud provider. How will you make it easier uh, to expose on-premise SAP REST and OData APIs to Azure API management? You want to pick this one, uh, Philip? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So first of all, uh, I think there is no out of the box integration today with Azure API management, but what is very important, of course, here, that, that, that I think the main answer is how, to, how what do you need actually to connect to an on-premise system, right? You need, first of all, a secure tunnel. And this is today done from an integration perspective, for example, over the SAP Cloud Connector or over CPI, for example. And this then by definition also assumes that the counterparts on the business technology platform, specifically the cloud platform services must be available. But of course now, the BTP, the cloud platform, is available on Azure uh, in, 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 in major regions around the world. And we are even planning as part of the entire partnership with Microsoft to even build this further out on the one hand side. And secondly, also improve, improve the integration uh, with, with Azure then more and more between the BTP so that whenever you connect the, 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 the SAP on-premise systems, which may run on-premise or even on Azure themselves, right, uh, on, on, a, on a hyperscaler, that this then works more seamlessly via the BTP than also on Azure, so that whenever somebody has is, is already on Azure, can then actually consume those services via the BTP-provided services. So that is, that is the, the, the way to go. And there we are making continuous progress also as part of our great partnership that we have together with our uh, fr friends here in Microsoft. Microsoft. Perfect. Uh, I think this next question must also be for you, Philip. It's about success factors and S4 HANA. Uh, how do we get the info uh, about how to connect with different apps, so SAP and non SAP, with success factors if we're not on SAP S4 HANA? Yeah, so it depends a little bit on what you mean with connecting different apps. So I think there are three potential answers to this question, and I'm not 100% sure how you mean it. So first of all, of course, there are applications that we provided that are out of the box available, for example, by our great partner ecosystem that are building on SAP success factors that you can, for example, uh, find in the app center where our partners provide apps that can be that, that work in most of the cases out of the box with success factors, or maybe there's some additional integration content that needs to be provided here. Um, the other pieces, of course, in general, again, via the cloud platform, we extend the, the systems uh, with like a success factor systems using the APIs that success factors uh, publishes. So they are available if you go to API 
www.sap.com, you find all the success factors APIs. You can easily, readily consume them again from the BTP, from the SAP Cloud Platform specifically, where you then can really build uh, uh, your own extensions, your custom extensions. And then finally, of course, there's also, and here again, go to the API Business Hub, uh, look for the integration content, for example, that is out of the box for, for CPI, for example, available, but also our open connectors that we have that, uh, that, that help you actually to connect with, with um, different SAP apps or uh, non-SAP apps, uh, the open connector specifically for the non-SAP apps, um, they're out, they out of the box. The third answer to the question, again, go to api.sap.com, look towards the SAP applications like success factors with field glass, for example, as part of Fire to Retire, go to the API Business Hub. There you actually find also the end-to-end -end business processes. There you actually can see the architectural, the enterprise architecture diagrams that Michael just described in the talk, where you can go in, you see how the systems are actually integrated, which middleware technologies are used to integrate those systems, which objects are exchanged, but also which APIs are actually used as part of the out-of-the-box integration. So you can just interactively then click inside the, the process diagram onto the, the, the integration point within success factors, for example, and see which API is actually used to facilitate that integration. So specifically for the SAP to SAP integrations, this is documented for the main end-to-end -end processes already on the business hub. And, and, and there, I think yeah, this is a great learning resource uh, to get you up to speed there. Perfect. Thank Very you. Very interesting, Beth. And, and if I could interject, uh, Mikhail, this is this is a question that we received uh, before the start of the show. Uh, came in through the other channels like social media and stuff like this, and I think it kind of plays into this one regarding integrations to non-SAP applications. My customer is using a non-SAP solution for small subsidiaries and SAP S4 HANA for everything else. How do I integrate the two? API Hub, Cloud Platform Integration, Enterprise Messaging, SAP Graph, Data Hub, there are just so many options and combinations. What could you give a, uh, as a tip here to this individual? Yeah, first of all, um, so we have many, many integration styles, right? So it's not, uh, also here again, it's not one answer to the question. And uh, in order to put some light into this, let's say variety of integration patterns, uh, we said we need the methodology behind. And this is what I mentioned in before, is the integration solution advisory methodology. So it gives you uh, basically a vehicle to align on the patterns which we have in terms of integration. And, uh, but this is the first point. Uh, the second point is the foundation behind what we use is our yeah, integration suite. And of course it covers uh, topics like the API hub, the so SAP graph, um, also API management and what brings us into the overall picture. So what I would encourage you is to look first at the session for the integration solution advising methodology to get uh, basically an understanding how to integrate it, for example, into hybrid integration scenarios. Secondly, um, there's also the integration suite. Uh, Philip also mentioned the open connectors and the like. Uh, where we basically have the options to integrate also non-SAP solution. And of course, a uh, clear targets of our platform is the openness, right? So to build up an ecosystem and allow partners to integrate and also even have the ability, for example, to also integrate legacy systems. And yes, uh, there are very good examples. So one I can actually manage is Chevron, who, who are using the integration solution advisor methodology to act because they exactly have the same question, right? So how do I now organize my integration, which tools I need to use. And also here, we just launched yesterday uh, two additional documents. One is a CIO guide for hybrid integration. And the second one is an integration guide uh, for enterprise architecture, which exactly outlines all the technologies you just mentioned, puts them in the big picture and helps you along the integration solution advisor methodology to basically take the technology of choice, which you need to use for your use case. So you mentioned two documents there, and they're both available from yesterday, you said, the CIO guide, and what was the other one again, sorry? The integration guide for, uh, for hybrid architectures and enterprise architects. Uh, we can post them into the, into the question. Perfect, okay, so people can go and check that out and find out more there. Um, 
Maybe a question to both of you about how you see SAP differentiating itself in terms of integration. Maybe, um, Philip, I'll start with you. How do you see SAP differentiating in the integration space? That's a very simple uh, answer to this question. I think with all our great portfolio that we have in SAP, when this is integrated out of the box, it delivers a value that no other company in the world can do. We have the best capabilities in all of our solutions. And by bringing those together, yeah, again, referring to the external workforce management a solution you have just seen, you see a tremendous value where you can combine, for example, internal workforce management with external workforce management, where all the data is shared among the solutions and then actually is all in a consistent fashion going towards s for hana to do all the the, the 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 purchasing the procurement and then of course also the, fi the, the financials of the entire process all in an in an out of the box fashion i think the integration is the biggest potential and i mean this is well, this is actually in sap's dna yeah? having a fully integrated uh, set of functionalities and this is exactly what we are striving for in the intelligent enterprise and then i think based on the capabilities and then combined and making the sum of the parts more than the individual uh, values of those pieces, that is actually then the one, uh, the main differentiator going forward um, for, for our customers. Do you see it the same way, Michael? Yes, of course. And, and maybe to add here, right, and give us some examples. I mean, we mentioned the topics with the master data integration, one domain model, of course, this is one piece. But if you look at other areas, for example, analytics, so if we do analytics across, let's say, all the different products in the integration with an under, yeah, underlying data architecture, I mean, this is something where we really are differentiating, where we can give insights into analytics, right? Um, uh, which of course has the highest value to our customers. So these are some examples, and this is exactly why we focused on these sweet qualities. So not only to lay into the foundation, so with the master or one domain model, or let's say identity integration and the like, but also uh, the topics like analytics, cross analytics um, and, and so forth. And Philip, where can people find out more about the external workforce uh, scenario? The, the, the scenario is already published, so you will definitely find it as part of the 2011 standard release documentation uh, on help.sap.com. We also will soon, I just uh, checked it in parallel, uh, will soon be also released on the API Business Hub. Um, the, the, the release decision uh, uh, is, is currently uh, in, in process while we speak for the documentation, where you then really can look also at the entire scenario, how it fits together again on the API Business Hub. Yeah? Go to api.sap.com. Com. On the left side, click on business processes, and there you will actually find a nice uh, graphical visualization of how this scenario works end to end together. Okay, and another question that we got was around um, if you're currently running on SAP S4 HANA on premise and you want to integrate with SAP Field Glass, where should the customer start? Again, also first of all, on the on the SAP on the SAP business business hub, yeah. So the, also the field class APIs are are documented over there, and if you want to integrate that, that's a, that's a great place to start actually. Okay. And maybe to add here, maybe to add here. Um, so you might have seen that we also released the uh, S4 HANA on premise API on API.business hub. And yes, this is why the answer is always API uh, Business Hub, <laughs> right? Because he, he made it the entry point. It's an easy Q&A, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah but, no, but we made it the entry point, right? So we want to have one entry point for customers to go to when it comes to the APIs, events, integration, also the end-to-end -end business scenarios, right? How does this work together to have a reference architecture? And yes, hopefully it makes it easier for you. And for this, by the, by the way, for this specific question, just to add, uh, just had to look it up. Um, if you if you go to uh, um, um, rapid.sap.com, it's scope item twenty two k. So you can check out really how S for Hana on prem integrates wow. with field class. Thank if you, you have this specific thing. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we saw yesterday in the keynote, Michael, you know, Jürgen was talking about the progress that has been made so far and, and in terms of integration and the sweet qualities and, and it's, you know, it's really, really good progress made in 2020. But where do we go from here? Yeah. So, yeah, we started the intelligent enterprise program quite some while ago, right, to focus on the four end-to-end -end business processes like D2Cash, source-to-pay, recruit-to-tire, 
uh, designed to operate and the like. Um, we, con we started with the three qualities to focus on the one domain model, on analytics, identity management, and the like. Um, and as Phyllis mentioned, we are going away from edge integration uh, to move towards uh, the business technology platform to even do a stronger integration on top of the business technology platform. So this means indeed um, that we will evolve here also over time and even strengthens what we do in the three qualities. So we will basically do even further integration if it comes to user experience. Uh, I mentioned the example of the one domain model where we do further integration along the end-to-end -end business scenarios. So this journey will continue um, and we are fully committed basically to uh, deliver on the according integration and evolve this over time. Okay, well, I'm, I, I know that we only have a couple of minutes left and I do want to make sure that you can both, you know, share any closing thoughts that you might have. And perhaps as two experienced TechEd goers, you might also have some tips for people uh, at TechEd this year, even though it's a little bit of a different TechEd. So, uh, Philip, if I start with you, anything you'd like to close on or any tips for TechEd? Yeah, no, first of all, thanks for joining the session from my side. I, I hope you could take away uh, that actually a lot is happening on the integration front in SAP. Yeah, Man Michael mentioned uh, the various forms of integration, which is, of course, in itself a complex topic. There are more guides, actually more and more really, uh, yeah, no, no demo where, but really working scenarios that work out of the box, yeah, that, that, that you can use with the latest version of, the, of, of our uh, cloud systems and more and more also on the hybrid side which is of course also here we listen to our customers which is, which is very very important and we are um, doing this now in a very very consistent fashion every quarter we will see more and more value that you can use there to really make the intelligent enterprise a reality um, for you so that's the, that's the first thing the other closing remark is of course we all know that we are living in a very complicated time I wish you all uh, a great holiday season already <laughs> now you. And, uh, and want to wish you that you are healthy and, and safe. Finally, the last session, if you're an enterprise architect, that's maybe my only uh, recommendation, go to the session, I think it's IIS 109, a colleague from us, Andreas Pot, will uh, talk about the end-to-end -end process blueprints for the intelligent enterprise. He can talk even, even more about the business processes and the scenarios I was just mentioning that are published on the API Business Hub, and he can explain you what is actually modeled okay, there, how perfect. we model this, and how you can leverage this. Okay. I'm sorry, Michael, I'm being told that we've run out of time, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Michael, for the insights. And we'll see you again at the Q&A on Thursday. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. See you. All right, thanks to both Michelle and uh, Philip there. Uh, as I mentioned, you can see them again in the Q&A, the second executive Q&A that we're having tomorrow, but they're also doing two more sessions. Uh, you can catch Michelle for uh, the session Architecture, Vision and Strategy behind SAP's Business Technology Platform. That's Strategy Talk ST100. And Philip will be doing Future Proof Your Extensibility Strategy across SAP Solutions in 2021, and that's ST104. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about the topic of integration, there is so much more on the content track itself. Um, the content track, of course, being in Integrated Intelligent Suite. I get tongue-tied with that one, Integrated Intelligent Suite, but that's what it's called. And we're gonna have a quick look now at what that suite is all about and what you can expect to find there on the SAP TechEd platform. At SAP, we believe in a holistic approach to integration that covers both technology and business processes and accelerates the speed of innovation. My name is Annette Asmus and I'm an integration expert at SAP. I invite you to join us online at the Integrated Intelligence Suite Track that is part of this year's SAP TechEd program. If you are a user interface designer, integrator, security expert, system admin, or data scientist, we are ready to share tips and tools with you to help optimize your organization. To learn how to simplify integrations as you have a seamless user experience, make use of aligned domain models across SAP applications, learn about security and identity management aspects, Use our toolings for coordinated lifecycle management, 
and make fast and confident decisions with embedded and cross-product analytics. Join me, SAP experts, and the entire SAP community online at SAP TechEd and learn how to make the integrated intelligent enterprise a reality for your company.